good afternoon, Aryan. Um, welcome to this interview. Um, I've been asked by University of St. Martin to interview you about your PhD thesis on small island tourism economies. Um, just a quick introduction uh, about myself uh, so that the viewers know who the interviewer is. My name is Eugène Hoogstad. Um, I'm with the University of Amsterdam Business School. And um, I've been asked, as I mentioned, by University of St. Martin to, uh, to interview you. Um, Arjen, as I've gotten to know you, um, you have worked on the islands of Curaçao, or sorry, Aruba and St. Martin for a very long time, 22 years, as a policy, policy advisor and as an economics uh, teacher. Um, yeah, please um, tell us a little bit about yourself and then afterwards we can have a look at your PhD thesis and uh, very interesting as well, um, how to move on in the future in terms of uh, island tourism. Yeah, thank you, uh, Eugene, and thank you, University of St. Martin, uh, for extending the invitation to me to tell something uh, to the public, the general public and the audience of uh, USM about my research. Indeed, I've been a, a resident of St. Martin uh, until very recently, for 14 years, and uh, I've divided my time between uh, activities as an educator, mostly in the field of economics and humanities and on the other hand as a, as a policy advisor in different fields as well stretching from uh, education, healthcare, labor, uh, anything socio-economic uh, on St. Martin mm -hmm. and in the period before that, the eight years before that I used to live on Aruba and my career looked pretty much the same also on the one yeah. hand policy advisor on the other hand yeah. So this this gives me a very nice opportunity uh, to tell, to give something back and to tell mm -hmm. something about uh, my uh, my research. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. of course, the, the the years that I used to live there piqued my uh, my curiosity and my interest mm -hmm. because Aruba and Saint Martin have, uh, have very much in common, being both islands with a high degree of uh, tourism yeah. uh, development. True. And I think so this, was, um, this was one of the um, uh, things that led you to your PhD thesis, if I'm correct. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it started out in Aruba mm -hmm. and living on St. Martin, uh, I realized that Aruba was not unique, nor is St. Martin. And they, they both actually are examples of a wider trend in the world of islands that are very highly specialized in, uh, in tourism as their main source of economic growth and not not just to the success the, uh, as seemingly successful islands but also hitting the limitations of that model and that's what piqued my interest and that's what led to my uh, my research what what made this happen yeah and why and uh, yeah seeing as how you know both islands um, face the limits of what they're doing how, how do we continue from here yeah very very interesting very interesting stuff um so just to dive into uh, the what made this happen um can you elaborate a little bit on that what do you mean by that what made this happen well yeah <clears throat> so both islands embarked um on on a, on a similar path in mm -hmm. the direction of tourism, right? But they also are very different from the other four islands in the the then Netherlands Antilles, right? Because mm -hmm. this all started out in the, in the 1960s, but Aruba and St. Martin went their way in developing tourism and almost exclusively tourism in the end, while the other islands uh, did differently. Yeah. And that's uh, what I delved into. And it, it, historically, it goes hand in hand with both islands actually veering away from the center of the Netherlands Antilles and diverging from, from constitutionally diverging as well, with Aruba mm -hmm. splitting off first because their, their developments were so different that they, 
you know, you yeah, couldn't hold from the, other islands in from the other five yeah. islands, and, yeah. and, and uh, later on, Saint Martin, who yeah. actually, you know, while still being in the Netherlands, the Jews already carved out their own corner where they were left alone in their so to speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. and being far away from the administrative center of Curacao. So you see that their distinct development also. You know, was it the cause of the Netherlands Antilles falling apart? Yeah. Right. So, um, in terms of the tourism, right, um, you had a look at uh, small island tourism, and um, your approach was uh, slightly different from what has been done up till now. And if I'm correct, you mentioned you mostly focused as well on the internal um, factors, right? So governmental factors and socioeconomic factors. Economic factors, yeah. yeah. The first, the first thing, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. The first yeah. thing that actually caught my uh, eye, first paradox, and let me share uh, my screen for a second, is this graph that you see here with, um, you see, two wiggly lines, mm -hmm. uh, one dashed, which is St. Martin, one solid line, which is Aruba. This is a measure that we usually use in economics to, um, to measure economic progress, measure by way of productivity, right? If the economy grows, we don't just want the economy to grow, we want to become more productive. Yeah. Want just a real, real quick um, question here. Can you explain um, what you mean by productivity? Yeah, so in this case, we measure it by uh, gross domestic product per capita. So how and much how much we earn um, per person? How much we produce uh, per person in a year. Mm -hmm. And also corrected, and of course, that number goes up by inflation alone. Yeah. Uh, so we, we eliminated inflation out of this. So we end up with real per capita GDP. And that gives you a measure of how productive your your population is. Yeah. And of course, you that number you want to grow, to, you want that number to go up. And it is true what you say, because normally that coincides with persons getting a higher income on average mm -hmm. as well, right? Yeah. So if you produce more, then if all goes well, we earn more as well. And Here, um, we see a certain trend, right? Yeah, well, the, the trend is pretty flat. So mm -hmm. you, you see a lot of ups and downs, which is more yeah. a statistical error than, than anything else. But on, on average, since the 1980s, mm -hmm. the 1980s, you see sharp progress. In, in the case of Aruba, after Lago closed, you see an enormous boom in productivity catching up with the level it had before uh, Lago was still there. And in the case of St. Martin, you see a spike there as well in the era of uh, the timeshare boom. Yeah. A lot of construction going on, so an enormous boost for GDP. But after that, it pretty much evens out and even goes down again. So we right. never quite you know, we never quite get over the 35,000 line. And, and if we do, we, we fall back pretty quickly. Yeah. So we, we uh, what you want to see here is a steady growth of this number and we, mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen. No. So, the, you know, uh, it, it's a bit more murky than you would want it to be, but that's because the statistics are a bit off uh, from year to year. That's why you have to look at uh, Obviously, obviously yeah. they fluctuate. There's some natural fluctuate natural a bit more. Yeah. What, you, what yeah. you see in the graph is a bit more fluctuation than, than reality. Yeah. Than there and, is. But anyway, the point here is that uh, progress means a lot of things, right? But on, on, on the minimum side, you definitely want an increase in real per capita GDP. If nothing else, then at least that. Sure. And what right. did you actually see then? What, what well, you what you actually it? see is it stagnates, basically. It just yeah. doesn't progress. It stagnates on average. And, and I believe um, you, you had some argumentation, right? On, uh, yeah, so, what, so the cause, that. Yeah, what caused yeah. that is, is that... Yeah. Is it okay the, if I, if I, if I uh, switch back the screen that we see our faces again? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm sure. Okay. Stop sharing now. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. 
uh, indeed. So um, you might see that as a, a like a minimum criteria for for progress, right? Yeah. There's a lot a lot of other things that you also want to measure, like the like, like the environment, like mm -hmm. all the quality of life stuff. But in the, you know the hard core, uh, you definitely want real per capita GDP to increase. Yeah. And the reason it didn't is that there was a shift actually from higher quality to lower quality uh, tourism product. Yeah. So, you know, classic uh, high level brand hotels were, mm -hmm. you know, replaced and um, by, by mostly timeshare and la later on also all inclusive projects but yep. um, so more not, general yeah. right so more yeah. things you can more get more average more. so so slowly but surely not not visible from year to year but definitely oh, visible change, right? in yeah. a 10 year period mm -hmm. and not only that but volume also grew enormously so the quality uh, volume so the amount of people yeah. right uh, the amount of uh, the amount of tourists yeah. um, you, you saw that in both it's a bit different between uh, Aruba and St. Martin but yeah. they, definitely in both cases and St. Martin on top of that shifted towards yeah. cruise tourism heavily towards cruise yeah. tourism as well but on average so what you get is tremendous volume growth mm -hmm. combined with a, with a slow decline in quality and that is pretty and much the opposite add, of what you want sorry um, just for my own understanding right added to that equation is the fact that there is a limited capacity because the island is just as big as it is as, exactly so that exactly. makes you bump into uh, the, the next big thing which is the carrying capacity does yeah. because a small island by nature of being an island has has a, a limited surface area so okay. what you see during that same period of time you're referring to from the 80s and 90s onward is that pretty much every every quarter of a mile of beachfront is filled with new hotel slash timeshare slash condominium development which is the volume growth i was referring to mm -hmm. which you know and it's not just that it's not just the hotels somebody has to work there so in the same period of time you see an enormous increase in population as well because all those jobs that are created yeah. Yeah, and actually we create too many jobs to grow the GDP yeah? because productivity means you do more with less people but we actually do you know more with, more with, and, yeah. with an increased amount of people so yeah. we you know we, we we grow the economy by a hundred and but we need 120 more people that's yeah. that's what basically happened so population grew enormously and that puts another level of pressure on the islands. It's not just the tourism itself, it's the, um, the population, the labor population and the population at large mm -hmm. that grows. And then that puts- Needs to be sustained. Yeah, yeah that, that puts pressure on the limited space, that spikes the yeah. home prices, it, it put pressure on, yeah. on education, on healthcare, on infrastructure, which yeah. is, you know, for an island with, by definition, limited space is the opposite of what you really would want. Definitely, definitely. So, um... in your thesis, you mention um, that there is this paradox, right? Because there is a, um, well, the, the island can grow in terms of um, productivity, um, and it does, um, and then it's fed by migrants you say right migrants come in and they help uh, with the jobs um and that seems to work but only on the one condition is that it should keep growing all the time but it can't because there's a limit right the island is only so big so you mentioned that i believe and you call it the mandatory growth paradox yeah so um yeah so between what i just told you and and, and now mm -hmm. right i asked myself the question you know this thing that i said with the limited carrying capacity and and uh, the island filling up with hotels and people this is not new right everybody can see that yeah right 
So yeah, I asked indeed. myself and I, I, I studied different reports and different uh, recommendations that different governments and their advisors had published over the years. So it turns out that actually that realization that this is a non-sustainable formula yeah. is actually pretty old. So both in Aruba and in St. Martin, in you know, the report, uh, you mean people have, have the, noticed yeah, since so the same government, the same governments uh, who yeah. continue along these lines are the same governments who had reports written that say we should stop. Yeah, right. So, so carrying yeah. capacity has been studied by the same governments who transgress the carrying capacity. So clear. Uh, in especially since the 1990s, where yeah. sustainability came up as an item as mm -hmm. an issue. Mm -hmm. And especially in St. Martin after Hurricane Lewis of 95, yeah. but also in Aruba around the turn of the century, actually around the year 2000. Several reports are written by the government of Aruba and the government of St. Martin that conclude, yeah, we can't go on like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Too much volume, too little quality. Everybody agrees. Yeah, 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 yeah. And vulnerable. And then the next day, and the next day, they, they turn the page and they build another hotel of yeah, mediocre yeah, yeah. quality. So the question that I ended up is what makes this model so attractive why is it apparently in everybody's interest you mean the the small just focusing on small island tourism why is it so attractive well right. keeping, so just to paraphrase your question that's what you meant by this model right this model is the model of continuous continuing with volume growth while you know oh. better all right yeah right so why do they continue Mm -hmm. while knowing it can't go on like this. So, yeah. the, you know, for more than 20 years, governments have done their homework, mm -hmm. concluded that it can't go on like this, yeah. and then turn around and... You still do it. Still continue doing the same thing all over again. Yeah. So, the question is, in whose interest is this, and why does this... Is this still an attractive model for most people? So the average, so thinking back to the first thing, right? The average in productivity and the average income stays the same. Yeah. So you would think that everybody is, that nobody's happy because nobody moves up, right? Mm -hmm. Because the average stays the same. Mm -hmm. But that is not, so that, that's where the paradox is because that is not true. Not everybody stays the same. Actually, everybody becomes better off. Everybody makes advancement in their career and their income. Yeah. So, so that is a paradox because I just told you that the, the average remains the same, mm -hmm. and now I'm telling you that everybody, everybody's income increases. Yeah. So, so that is the the core of my findings is is that mandatory growth paradox, which I'll, mm -hmm. I'll show yeah. you now. So that looks like this. So what you see is an original population that is somewhat smaller, that already consists of locals and immigrants, right? Yeah. Um, so since the, since the dawn of tourism, there have been immigrants to, to work in the hospitality sector because the amount of work has almost from the beginning been more than the local population could do, obviously, yeah. because there's just not many people on these islands originally. So during those time, there's a steady flow of new immigrants adding to the population at the bottom, doing, you know, the less attractive jobs for, for less pay mm -hmm. and su supplementing the labor population at the bottom of the pyramid, social yep. pyramid. And then the so, rest moves up. Yes. But yeah. those people, the recent immigrants are happy too, because they are, they, they, they yeah. come from, from poorer countries yeah. in the region yeah. and the existing people, they all move up to the next level in the pyramid, the top yeah. moves moves up, the center moves up, and the bottom gets supplemented by people, by, by recent immigration from poorer countries around us, or in, in the case of Aruba, from, from the mainland, but also from Jamaica and also from Haiti, yeah. and in the case of St. Martin, from the bigger islands in the, in the northern Caribbean. Yeah. All right. Time we will be prepared this um, there was also mentioning of okay let's look into how would we proceed from here right so let's look into the future um this 
graph that you just showed, you say, I believe if I understand correctly, you say it only works because there is a constant growth, right? Yeah, everybody stays happy because the model is still growing. So that it's explains the, the, the moving up yeah. is by virtue of the total population and the total economy mm -hmm. growing. growing. So the ever, yeah, so in a, a, you, you solve the puzzle of the average remaining mm -hmm. the same by by yeah by inflating mm -hmm. the total uh, population sure. and total economy sure. you should, so you create more room at the top yeah by making the entire building bigger that's true but if you talk about making the entire building bigger um there is a natural limit because you know an island is only so big and there's only so much space to do things um and then you know we talked about okay governments or um, institutions or those that decide um have shown demonstrated they were aware of this issue right that uh, reaching this carrying carrying capacity but then the question is like not not much was done by uh, by them right that's what you what you uh, what you yeah. mean um what i'm interested in um i mean you know if you, if you want to wrap up um what you just mentioned, that's fine as well. But just to uh, tell you what I'm interested in. Um, if you look at um, this idea of, okay, we, we might exceed our carrying capacity, right? And and alongside, there are a lot of issues right now, for example, uh, recovering from the hurricane and uh, COVID-19, uh, which extends into 20 and probably 21. Um, how to proceed from here? You know, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a urgent urgent matter I think uh, to be addressed. Yeah. So what what yeah. are your let, thoughts? Let, let, yeah. Let me let me make that bridge by by, by connecting to the the main theory that I used mm -hmm. for um, for my thesis, which is the tur tourism area life cycle yeah. theory by Richard Butler. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the picture that you see on your screen right now. Um, a life cycle theory yeah. that that some of you will uh, recognize as the same thing as a product life cycle, which it is mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So, so Just, Butler, can, you, can you run us through the the, the, yeah. the different stages of the cycle? Real quick? Yeah. yeah. So 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 inter interestingly, Aruba as well as St. Martin, as well as many other tourism destinations, pretty neatly followed the stages that Butler. Um, yeah, from so his it, earlier work in 1980, uh, indicated right. Yeah, economy, so you, right. We're talking about the economy growing. We're talking, growing, we're growing. talking about tourism as a, as a tourism destination. So yeah. you have you have a stage of exploration and in, uh, and followed by involvement, which is when when the occasional tourists washes up at your yeah, shores yeah, and yeah. and it's all interesting and new and exotic. Yeah. yeah? Then the serious development kicks in serious hotels get built yeah, yeah. right which which already happened in the 1960s in, in Aruba and also in uh, in St Martin mm -hmm. which you know uh, the development uh, everybody in, in St Martin of a certain age remembers that you know around 1970 Mullet Bay was built yeah. along with a number of other large hotels like like the Great Bay Hotel and, and a few others that really pushed uh, St. Martin through the development stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, then you reach a, a level of maturity. And from 1980 onwards, uh, more or less, you get what you might call the consolidation stage, uh, which in the case of St. Martin is characterized by uh, by the timeshare boom. Mm -hmm. OK, so so in, in terms of what government did, in the early phases, government pretty much followed the laissez-faire ideology. Just let the investors come and yeah, you'll yeah, see yeah. where we end up. The we, we basically arrange itself, yeah. Yeah, and we basically only uh, we, we take care of the, the right conditions mm -hmm. and we open the door and we spread out the opportunities and go ahead. Yeah, and, yeah. But the, the, so there wasn't much management of who came in and what they did as long as they came in and invested and did something that brought uh, economic production so that and that worked ex 
extremely well for, for St. Martin and also for Aruba, especially after closing of uh, yeah. after the closing I of believe, the lockout. Um, I believe you also mentioned it, it was masked by the fact that there was a lot of growth. Is that, is yeah, that, uh, of course, of course. So that, that brought tremendous economic growth, fueled yeah. by those foreign investors and fueled by immigrant labor, mm-hmm. right? Those two factors together uh, helped it. Yeah, yeah tur- turbocharged uh, the economic growth, mm-hmm. right? But so I, I indicated the tipping point here because after a certain stretch of growth, you see that reality catches up with growth. Right. Right. The yeah. island becomes As fuller. Does, yeah. So tourism. So I'm writing here in the mature phases, the issues of the mature small island tourist economies outgrow governance capacity. Mm-hmm. So, so let's say light, light government, government mm-hmm. light, that was the success factor at first, now becomes a problem. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, because the, the they islands get changed like that. They were yeah, the they islands small at the beginning, and they didn't, they weren't involved. And then when you have to be involved, you can't no, just change you, within you, a year. It's exactly, you problems. can't change governance culture. Uh, you know, in a year or something. And, uh, yeah, and then you, you 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 suddenly find out that you do need an active and, and forceful government, yeah. and you don't have one. Clear. And, and yeah, so that's and that's the same at the same time, and that's the the dashes here mm-hmm. and that is also from butler's uh, theory already he, he also um, recognized that in that stage consolidation and stagnation state stages you you will hit uh, your carrying capacity as a tourism destination and and remember this is not for islands and eh? this is for any tourism destination yeah yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, yeah. and also so this argument goes even stronger for islands because you don't have a uh, a back land behind you that you no, can no, fall no. back on you only have your tiny island so exactly. anyway so you need you desperately need a strong government yeah. and when you need it you don't have it so mm-hmm. then the problems start and, and uh, so the tourism product itself declines in quality yeah so it's it stagnates in quality and it starts it still grows eh? but it grows more slowly um and uh yeah so the yeah. contribution to the economy gets smaller on a room by room visitor by visitor basis yeah. right each visitor each additional visitor visitor actually contributes less mm-hmm. than the previous one yeah. e- each new hotel is a little bit less in quality than the previous one mm-hmm. so and the, the tourism is starting to bite its own tail. So, that, by which I mean that the, the negative developments, the overcrowding, the lack of infrastructure, the social problems start interfering with the tourism product itself. Yeah. Also, the environmental problems. Nobody likes to stay in a hotel and see a burning uh, garbage no, dump at the horizon. Uh, Definitely. I think sometimes it's underestimated how important uh, culture as, is as a factor for your tourism yeah. product, right? And, and culture, yeah, culture is supposed yeah. to be positive, right? It's supposed yeah, to be an attraction. experience where you go somewhere, yeah. you make memories, you're like, oh, I love the food, yeah. love and the people. The, yes, love the, the people and the atmosphere, social yeah. cohesion yeah. is a factor, is a contributing yeah. factor in itself to a tourism product, which, by the way, again, is recognized by governments as early as the 1990s. No, no, I mean, it, it makes yeah. a lot of sense, right? But yeah. as we all know, the the idea of something and implementing it, you know, it's yeah. a big gap between the two. Um, yeah. So but going to the future then, yeah, okay. to the future. you want to go to the future, right? Yeah. And again, connecting to the theory of Butler, which yeah. is... So tr- this, tr- this yeah. um, slide, this, this picture is uh, the theory of Butler, just to yes, yes. So those this words. is the what yeah. uh, the, the the text blocks Written to the left back. and the right on my yeah. on my own, but yeah. the the curve and the, the terms are all uh, mm-hmm. Butler's, including yeah. critical range of carrying capacity and including yeah. and that, that's what we want to see, right? What what are the options for? Yes, yeah, definitely. So, so interestingly, options, right? Rejuvenation yeah. or three extend stagnation and decline. Well, decline you don't want to have. Because that's not good. No, no, and and, and interest, which is almost scary. But he uh, Butler, 
uh, actual decline decline he recognized as something that could happen by way of a, a an, an international pandemic for instance which is yeah um, which is the exact what example yeah which is exactly certain, what's happening now but, but okay. even so even leaving out covid for a second we would uh st martin and aruba also is highly at risk of sliding into a, a serious uh the form of decline anyway yep. um so uh, uh, whereas at the other end if you want rejuvenation you mm-hmm. you talk about reinventing the product itself yeah. so i'd like to, to talk about that a little bit uh, more mm-hmm. um right so we talked about okay um, this is the the kind of cycle you go through. These are the stages you go through as a small island uh, tourism economy, and um, you grow in the beginning. And we all noticed that, um, right? And uh, I've heard a lot of stories as well about Mullet Bay and, and all those things, uh, building of the hotels. And then you know the sky is the limit, basically. And I can imagine that that lived like that in the perceptions of the people. Um, and at one point, you your growth is going to decline. You're not going to keep growing as fast as you as you were. Um, that's just well, a natural thing. You will. You th- that's well. That's the tricky part. Then you will actually keep growing in volume. Oh, probably. The, the you you will keep. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you um, even that will stop at a certain point in time. I and mean, at, growth at some point will stop. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Well, it. You know, we, we talked about stagnation and we talked mm-hmm. about decline, right? Yeah. Up until stagnation, the volume will keep on growing for a good while. Yeah. Because because the hotels are desperate and and, and cruise yeah. Yeah. cruise lines, so know, they will keep yeah. pumping. They they will keep pumping more cheaper True. tourists into yeah. your economy. Yeah. But that will then quality you, goes you know, down. Yeah, you will end up in a tailspin because. The quality will get lower and lower, and will get will bite. So it's it. Yeah, it's tough in the tail, as you mentioned. Um, so it's not very. It's not a very sustainable way of doing things, right? If you want to go okay. into the future. So um, just for the last part, I'm I'm interested in in your ideas of what would be a sustainable way. But looking at the situation, how it is now. So not necessarily as in okay, we should do this or that. But let's just maybe start with what do you think are the most urgent things that need need to be addressed, and then later on, okay, what are uh, very important things um, to think about when you want to have a sustainable tourism yeah. economy towards the future? Yeah. So, well, you know, in a sense, uh, COVID is forcing our hand mm-hmm. because you know the the islands uh, are in a deep crisis anyway, and and crisis, of course, is is a disaster, but it, you could morph it into an opportunity as well. Now, once you uh, th- there's a destruction, but it could we could turn it into creative. Um, yeah, there's a creative destruction, destruction right? Because destruction, right? Sure. Uh, it opens. Yeah. 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 Because you know what you want, but what is what is terribly hard to achieve is actually a reduction in volume because somewhere something's got to give Mm -hmm. right something's got to give so so something has to start changing and and we already have this drop in volume so now we want to recover right now in that recovery which is the same basically what we saw after Irma choices will be made and choices have to be made so now is the opportunity to do that management that mm-hmm. we never did yeah steer the tourism economy in a more sustainable direction by promoting higher and higher quality so activities. yeah so we're talking about uh, changes uh, across the board right because it's, it's yeah but also on a national one. on a national level we we yeah. hardly ever had a structural concept of tourism development at a national level or what, right? what, what does it what does it mean to be successful in the tourism economy what, exactly what, what we had when, or, when, what when we are you had, doing yes. a good job 
Yeah. yeah, well, it was always defined in marketing terms, right? So success was... Can you give an example? Sorry? Can you give an example? Yeah, so, so success was always defined in terms of, oh, we attracted more tourists than last yeah. year, or we attracted more cruise ships, we had more moorings than last year, we had... Just we had the numbers and... Uh, all the, yeah, the, the volume numbers were, were our success, uh, were the definition of our success. Whereas you really, really need to look at different numbers. You really need to look right. at hope so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you economically uh, inputs and factors. Economically, you want to look at not how many visitors you have, but what one visitor spends in a day. Yeah. You don't want to look at the accommodation only. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to look at building a hotel. No, yeah. you want to build an experience. So yes, yes, you need accommodation, but you also need the activities to go with it. What does the tourist do during yeah. the day, so except it, sitting on the beach on, on a beach yeah, yeah. chair? Which is very general, which you can do anywhere in the world, basically, right? Exactly. So so, so to you can only add quality by by giving by marketing a distinctive product, and we have yeah. moved in the direction of generic products. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. You know, an, a, your average all-inclusive resort, you could pick up put and it in Santo Domingo sure. and you would never know. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, when so, you say so um, move, move from generic to distinctive, move yeah. move to quality. And now, just now to, you have just to, to catch up on, on that part real quick, Arjen. So um, yeah. you mentioned where well, you sell the experience and you, as an economist, you're more interested in, you know, how much people spend. Um, and if I would then add a strategic element to that, which maybe is marketing as well, but um, also that you have a clear idea of why people spend the money. Exactly. Right? Because then you know your product and you can yes. make it unique and not so, just a resource. So work your way, in, yeah. instead of building the hotel and then asking yourself what those, what those people are going to do all day. Exactly. What they want. Uh, yeah. Yes, start with the experience and work your way back from that, that is development. That is also development of tourism. We, we never did that. We did marketing of tourism. Yeah. So it was we kind never, of... We never really did development of tourism. Yeah. We did development of hotels, individual hotels, individual yeah, yeah, yeah. projects. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we did, well, not nothing, but we did very little of actually coherent and cohesive national yeah. development. Like, uh, for example, in Dubai. Dubai started, yeah. I think, 20, yeah. 30 yeah. years ago, and they were like, okay, we can't depend on oil uh, anymore. Yeah. We need a different economy. And then yes. as an entire nation, they they developed it with a clear idea. And now, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a success. Yeah, think, think, so, what you, think what you want about it. Exactly. It I is, have my own opinion based, about it, but it's successful. Yeah, that's, that's, that is what it is. But it, I mean, yeah. uh, you, you can, it's a clear example of working your way starting out with the national concept of what you mm -hmm. want to be in tourism terms and work work back from that towards concrete projects and concrete products and concrete experiences we always did the opposite we just opened the door to whoever wanted to yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. We, we we just went with the flow mm -hmm. and like okay we'll see where okay. we end up after in the 10 fact, years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and then mopping up after the after, after yeah. the mopping up after the developments instead of steering the development. Yeah. So um, can I ask uh, you know, to, to continue on this? Um, it's a across the board thing. So it's at, an, at a national level, but I can imagine that you know different uh, parties in society have their own roles in, in this. So could you maybe elaborate on your ideas of um, how um, the, the government, the governmental level should be involved and perhaps yeah. also uh, businesses or even uh, just the the, yeah. the the individual well that that's the yeah. other thing right the, yeah. you know government is just one player in this mm -hmm. and well it, it's it's been a spotty uh, track record in that sense there have been instances where government really teamed up with with private sector but it is yeah. mostly short lived anyway what you if you want to make this a success you need two dimensions of cohesion, in my opinion. Yeah. Cohesion between private and public sector, so government and business. Well, 
private business, private sector, including, uh, of course, the labor. And, but also, on the other hand, on the social side, cohesion between, you know, um, more recent and um, oh, you older, call older immigrants, so yeah. to speak, because almost everybody is an immigrant eventually. But anyway, uh, you know, there, there is, uh, we've been, for St. Martin, has been moving away from cohesion, right? There has been yeah, as rapid, a society, you mean people amongst as a society, yeah. yeah. So you want to pull that together again and make yeah. everybody an, an active Part of participant. The same identity, yeah. yeah. And 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 right now, the, the in, in the past decades, that distance has been growing instead yeah. of moving closer together, because it's 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 not really possible to to project a, a, an idea of a nation in. A, in the tourism sense either if you don't have a cohesive yeah, uh, yeah, population to start with should be so if, if nobody you know it's all about ownership so it's it, yeah. on the on the public private side is about own, creating ownership and stability yeah right because uh, businesses really like stability and on the other side as well it's about ownership every you know there's nothing wrong with with immigration obviously because we, we grew by virtue of immigration but the immigrants and locals should all feel kind of the same measure of ownership of the project yeah, of yeah, the yeah. national project that goes on and, and that has like that's, that's hard to achieve right? it's, it's hard to achieve in, at the best of times but my point is it has been moving in the wrong direction instead mm. of in the right direction so that has to be something has to be done with that. pivoted yeah. and and um, and of course that also means that yeah and, and coming full circle, circle to productivity, we have been growing production by, by adding people, but that's not what you, that's not productivity. Productivity is making more with the same amount of people or less people, right? Yeah. And we, we've been doing the opposite. Yeah. Every time uh, we have been growing only by growing the population. And that is, that's a dead end street on a small island. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I hear is that, you know, if you want to grow your productivity, you first need to think about, well, what is my product as tour my tourism product to begin with? Um, you know, yeah, what's your concept? What's your what's national your concept, concept? What makes the destination? Unique? Clear. Yeah. And then um, in order to do that, we need a few conditions. And that is uh, government and private sector collaboration, cohesion. But also and cohesion, stability, yes. and stability, <laughs> of course, uh, for businesses, for everyone actually, and yeah, then cohesion everyone. amongst the people of Saint Martin. And I think the last part is is very interesting. And um, you know, um, I think a, a big part should um, be for uh, the next generations. You know, because if you yeah. see the kids, they grow up together, they don't really feel like, oh, you are an immigrant or you your family came to the island recently, you know, they, there's, there's, a, there's a definitely opportunity there. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very interesting what's going to happen in the, in the near future in, in that sense, because the situation is, uh, as far as I can see, quite urgent. And uh, it's very interesting to see what the next steps will be, um, you know, for, uh, for the island. Yeah, and, and St. Martin can't do it alone. Eh? So that, that is another important dimension apart from the public private and the social ones that's just on your island but you know you can't do this without cooperation within the region for sure. right and um, for instance between different islands who uh, who are cruise ship destinations for instance mm -hmm. uh, with the with the with the other you know former uh, netherlands and Philippines islands yeah. with within the kingdom you need all the cooperation uh, you can get definitely so there's a, a lot of work ahead of uh, saint martin to uh, to get out of uh, at least uh, uh, improve from you know where it is right now with, yeah uh, turn turn economy. turn the yeah turn the challenge into an opportunity it's a it's cliche but problem. it's uh, yeah. still it's a relevant cliche <laughs> It is, it is. And, and you know, I, I believe an uh, important part is also how you perceive it. You know, you can't um, solve the problems if you stick in the same state of mind or the mindset that kind of, you know, um, led you to this path. Um, so there's also a question of, okay, are you able to, to see it 
and you 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 mentioned that they are you know yes yeah, that is one of my paradoxes yeah, yeah they yeah, actually yeah. And know then the next what's question wrong. is you know are you able to do something about it so, exactly uh, yeah, yeah very interesting um i want to thank you for for your for your contribution i really enjoyed it i enjoyed reading uh, the paper i enjoyed uh, our talk as well as the preparation talk that we have had um i'm looking forward to talking more uh with you about these uh, these topics but i think uh, in terms of uh, time for this interview uh, we're out so thank you again uh, aryan and um i'll conclude it with this then you're welcome right. thank you Bye -bye.